Hello, and this is going to be the first meeting for our Gig South Texas group. And with us today, we're going to have also Dr. Jackson. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Dr. Karen Jackson, and I'm a uh, recently retired instructional technology specialist, but I've got some irons in the fire and uh, hope to be um, employed at the local university very soon. So we shall see how that goes. But um, I've been uh, in education for 23 years and really enjoy uh, technology and basically learning in all its forms. That's me. Awesome. And next is Julie Kelly. Would you like to hey introduce guys. yourself? Hello, Julie. I'm sorry, Carlos, what? Would you like to introduce yourself? Okay, sure. Uh, Julie Kelly from Westlaco Independent School District. I am the instructional technology strategist for Westlaco. I work out of the uh, technology department. Awesome. Thank you. And um, I guess I'll go next, uh, Mr. G. Um, I just got the news recently that I'm the gag leader for this group, so that's awesome. And uh, <laughs> yes, thank you. And um, well, I'm a teacher at What is Lincoln High School, and I teach uh, computer-related subjects. I'm also a Google for Education certified trainer, and uh, that's pretty much how I got into this. <laughs> okay, so I'm not sure if you all receive uh, the agenda that, uh, okay, um, it was posted on the, on the calendar. I'm not sure if you received a calendar invite or it should, it might appear on your calendar just there. Can I look for it? Oh, I see. It didn't. I see. It said agenda at the last word, not up front. Oh, okay. Etiquette. All right. All right. So, yes, a few things that I want to talk about here is um, starting with how should we run a meeting? So anybody wants to make suggestions? Or rather, before we start with that, how about we have Mr. Alfondo, Alfonso Mendoza introduce himself, if uh, you're ready. He might still be trying to log in. So, um, all right. So one of the topics that was suggested is to have some kind of etiquette for when you chime in. And I see a chat message. Joining in from the phone. Okay, awesome. So when he has a chance, I hope uh, Mr. Oh, okay. Mendoza to chime in on this as well. Um, so, yes, how can we run a meeting? What is the etiquette? What can we do? Uh, start with, we could start with um, if there are any new topics or anything that, that come up. Are you planning to have these each month? Yes, that is the goal, to have a monthly meeting, uh, preferably towards the end of the month, uh, preferably on a Wednesday. But, for example, next week for us, it's uh, Thanksgiving week, so I opted yeah. for a week earlier this time, for example. And then there's going to be that time when there's going to be a, uh, well, next month, for example, there's a Christmas break. Yeah. Um. David, let them know what's are you, going on. I guess when you talk about hangout etiquette, you're not talking about, are you just talking about how we jump in and in on each other? Um, I, I, what are you trying to um, resolve with this section? Right now, there's four of us. And in the future, there may be several that may be joining a meeting and with Google Hangouts at the moment, there could be from 25 to 100 people joining in a meeting. So if I hope it does get to that point, but <laughs> mm -hmm. as of right now, it's not a big deal. But when it does get to that point, how can we manage a Hangout? Okay. You know, um, 
Oh gosh, I need to go look for it. About two months ago, I came across a document um, where it talks about how they do digital online hangouts. And when the agenda goes out and people want to add to the agenda, they put their topic in, their name, and then they specify they need two minutes or one minute, or if they think what they want to add to the conversation is going to be five minutes, but they specify how many minutes of the meeting. And then the, the moderator holds them to that. Okay. So would you say that the current way that I have the agenda, topic one, our gig, topic two, topic three and four, would that be something like what you're telling me? Yeah. yeah. Um, I've got my dual monitor up. I'll see if I can find it. That sounds good. And then people just put in, yeah, so like under, oh, yeah, change name, topic four, Julie Kelly. I want five minutes to talk about level two testing or something. All right. I don't, but I mean, that's. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that sounds awesome. Yeah, no, I think this is good. This this will work. Okay. All right. Um Let's see. So, uh, any of you not aware what a gig is? Okay. So we understand a Google educator group and what we do is mainly come together as a group of educators that use Google. Uh, me personally, I'm a Google fan, so I'm all into Google. But there's a difference between being a fan and actually using Google. Um, being a fan of Google is really not what we want. What we want is somebody that can actually use Google the correct way to help students achieve their goals. Right. Okay. And... Um, All right, so a few things that I want to show you about our website, and I'm still hoping that we can uh, add more in it, more about it. Uh, let me just uh, start sharing the screen. So if I go to geg.soutx.us, And this is done on Google Sites, so um, it was fairly simple to use. This is where I started with pretty much having everything as a platform to begin with. So whenever somebody is looking for a Google Educator group, uh, somebody searches for that and they find this community page, they will come up with a map where they have all the different uh, gigs. And we were just recently added. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so here we are. Looks like most of Texas is gone. There used to be several in Texas and they're yes. mostly gone. So uh, as of right now, we're the only ones in Texas. So that's awesome. And when I, if it doesn't let me click on it, let me. Oh, okay. So apparently I have to be. All right. So when I click on it, it takes me directly to the website because I want people to understand about what is expected with rules of conduct and joining the gag. For example, what is it that I'm asking for? Because I want to make sure that it is uh, educators joining and not somebody that is going to spam the group, you know? Right. right. Do you think, uh, I just have a question. Do you think that maybe the other um, groups disappeared when Google Plus disappeared? Is that, I, and weren't they connected? Yes, actually, that is a big problem that after Google Plus disappeared, a lot of the people did not join the appropriate uh, Google yeah. groups. Uh, they were trying to change. And South Texas actually used to be in Google+. Mm -hmm. Then the Google group for South Texas was created by 
and the former leader. Actually, let me go back over here. Under leadership, the former leader was Efren Rodriguez. Uh-huh. He used to be the South Texas uh, leader for back when it was Google Plus. Yeah. It's so, like, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, you know, I was just going to say so when Google Plus died, pretty much the group went along with it. Yeah. So, him and I were have been trying to get it up and running again. But unfortunately, he had other commitments and he had to give the leadership to me. I'm sorry. So you were going to say? Was that you, Dr. Jackson? Yeah, uh, I'm just I'm still here. But I don't see myself. That's all right. Uh, I see I, you. Yeah, I see you, you too. Me? Yes, I'm here. You I as well. I just was wondering because uh, I thought I was in in a, a GG and uh, for Central Texas, but I didn't find one. And then when I saw your your, I think I saw it on Twitter or something. You put the word out, and I thought, you know, I haven't participated in a GG in a while. So, um, so anyway, that's why I'm. I'm, you know. Temple is kind of pretty far north for South Texas, but I'll call myself <laughs> South Texas. I don't care. That's awesome. <laughs> Northern boundary of South Texas. How's that? Yeah, that's there you awesome. Go. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, and the point of a gag is not necessarily to limit who gets to join. Uh, and it's all inclusive as long as it's educators using Google mm-hmm. to benefit the students. And the idea also is that to invite others because it's not just a perspective, although it is for South Texas to help this region to grow, especially in a uh, global market, so we cannot limit it to just South Texas educators. Yeah. So thank you for joining us, by the way. Sure. Very happy to. Um. Karen, can I call you Karen? Or are you Dr. Yes, call, yeah, yeah, call me Karen. Okay, and Julie. So I'm also a certified trainer. Mm-hmm. What is your background with Google? Uh, I am uh, an educator, um, one and two, and a trainer. And then I'm also a Google innovator. I've been, I went to the Sweden um, 17 cohort. I'm so jealous. So am I. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, y'all, it's life changing. I'll help you any way I can, any way I can. I mean, um, they're uh, just working with people who are as excited about education is just, it, it was, it was great. So um, you, you'll love it. And um, so I, I think everyone, every educator should, uh, you know, just try to, to meet with, with a group, try to be one or whatever, but um And of course, it's like anything you get out of it, what you want, you know, how much, how much you put into it. Uh, There are not, not everyone um, is, is even using or, or um, staying in contact, but the ones of us that are, are still together. Like I just talked to someone yesterday that I, I only met in, in uh, 2017, but we're still pretty close. So um, really great educators. Anyway, that's my little commercial. And what <laughs> is your um, your project about? Well, I'm glad you asked about that. Um, <laughs> it's uh, my project was about teacher agency in professional development. I feel like <sighs> teachers need to have a choice in what they learn about. And in the chat, I'll put my little website if you don't, you know, if you want to see it. Um, Go ahead. But uh, I, I, in, so it ended up to be called the G Suite for me, the teacher agency project. And um, the short version is that I formed little jump teams with different campuses that I served. And those jump teams uh, were very flexible. So if I only had about four teachers that wanted to learn about Flipgrid, 
then they would be a jump team. And they, for, for three weeks, they would be learning about Flipgrid and I would be facilitating for them. And then uh, we come back together and we celebrate. And we talk about all the mistakes we made and, and um, then that kind of dissolves and then there's someone else. So you can learn mm -hmm. several different things through the semester. And um, in my mind, I wanted to go through and um, do like micro -cred credentialing or something maybe with my mm -hmm. district, but but I, I didn't get that far. So <laughs> um, anyway, I'll just, uh, let's see. She's sweet for me. Okay, as far as micro -cred credentialing, um, one of my goals is to do badging for our group. So I'm, I'm not sure if you noticed that when I posted some of the badges that um, you have earned for introducing yourselves. Oh. Hey, I, I did. I thought the... Um, the uh, like most I, I only posted once, but I thought it was kind of funny that I got the most most posts in October or something like that. It was really cool. <laughs> I was I, re I retweeted that on Twitter too. <laughs> yeah, the, that was because you were the only one that posted in October. <laughs> hey, there are benefits with being a first adopter in there. Yeah, that's right. And sounds like we have Alfonso Mendoza. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm back. Hello? Yes, go ahead and introduce yourself. All right. Hey, guys. Sorry about that. I was running a little bit late. We we're having a meeting. My name is Alfonso Mendoza. I'm a instructional technologist for Sherryland ISD. Uh, you can also call me Fonz. Everybody knows me by Fonz, too, as well. And it's a pleasure to be part of the group and uh, of the work that... Uh, Carlos is doing and uh, getting to meet uh, other awesome educators, innovators, and people that are interested in just uh, bringing all these amazing tools to students. So thank you for uh, allowing me to be part of this group, and I hope to learn a lot from a lot of you. Awesome. Thank you for, for that. Okay. Um, Alfonso, I'm not sure, or should I say Fonz? Uh, I'm not sure if you have access to the chat. Are you do are you doing uh, through the phone, like calling in, or are you doing Hangouts? Oh, I'm doing the the Hangouts. Oh, okay, so you yeah, should have I'm access to the chat. Yeah. yeah, I'm getting ready to drive, so I'm driving home. I just got out of the meeting. I was like, I don't want to miss out on all this great stuff, so I just have my phone set up and everything. I'm. I'm promising I'm not texting and driving, but at least I'm hanging out and driving, so I'll be able to listen in. <laughs> okay. The uh, reason I was saying is because I do have a signing sheet. One of the things that uh, Google requires oh, me I to do is uh, to have a sign-up sheet, so it, it'll be there. Right now. Perfect. When I click on the link, it tells me the resource is not available. Is that on my end or? Uh, that's actually a good question. Let me check, make sure that I yeah, did it. The, oh, yeah. my mistake. I forgot to remove yeah. the domain. Okay, so it should be available now if you refresh. Or click on the link Perfect. again. Got it. There we go. Okay. Um, so this is going to be another thing that I want to do is uh, for one of you to talk about um, Google related products. And um, I'm not sure if any of you would like to add to the topic at hand. Hey, I could uh, paste in about that Google Earth. Post. Oh, yeah, the I one that you posted today. Them. That would be awesome. Go ahead. Yeah, it was so cool. Um, one of the things, and actually this is, was a, uh, an opportunity I had because of the, um, the innovator. Uh, I was part of the beta testing for this Google um, Journeys. And um, if I can find the post. Um, anyway, the, I'll find the link here in just a second. But uh, it's it's not it's out of beta now, so we can uh, just try it and um, create some lessons and things like that with it. But you're able to make create cards with you know 
with a student project and they could go from one place to another in your community and you could put cards and videos and explainer videos and the kids could kind of do a map of their town or you know however you want to use it or tell a story or illustrate here's a map that has to do with the story um, they did a lot of work on google maps as far as uh, it's not so much of a bandwidth hog but i i'm thinking it still has to be quite a bit of bandwidth but um uh, i couldn't use it before when i was in the classroom because of a, a lab situation but um i think one or two at a time it might be, be able to happen so um I'll get the I'll get the link out of the uh, well I posted it in our group. Yeah, I saw that. Thank you. you have, um, yeah, actually, Google Earth was really awesome that you mentioned that because uh, I actually used it today. I created a video and I put it up on Twitter, and it was really cool because you can build a presentation within Google mm -hmm. Earth, so you can go to certain topics. I picked Paris. I picked a bunch of locations. I added it to the the presentation. And then you can share through a link or collaborate. So now you can have a whole classroom just collaborate and putting things together like you were mentioning. So it was just something amazing. So uh, great tools and uh, uh, that they're putting out now. That's great. You're able to use that with the students. That's awesome. Okay. And with us, we have one of my coworkers. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Ana Maria Perez. I'm the librarian at Juarez Lincoln High School. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. Um, okay, so I'm just joining in, catching up with my emails um, and joining in on the meeting. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So, yes, Google Earth, it's pretty awesome. Uh, but there were other tools similar to that, right? I used um, my maps. And did the same thing uh, in this in August with a uh, professional development with you know teachers and stuff. And I used my maps and had them go from West Slico. The first my map was starting here in West Slico at the school we were at, and then they needed to stop at the Walmart and buy a swimsuit, and then they had a task that they had to do there. And each my map led us from West Slico over to South Padre Island. And then you know the big blue eyes. We were, you know, we <laughs> we road trip to the beach, and it was just That's it's awesome. silly, it's fun, but it, it's engaging. Um, definitely requires some skills that I thought everybody had that they didn't have. So some, sometimes we can get caught up in having to teach a skill instead of what we really wanted them to be doing. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If it's easy enough, then they take it and run with it. Yeah. There's also something called Tour Builder or Tour Creator. Yeah. Tour Builder, I think it's called. I've not used it. I i don't remember which one I use because there's two, Tour Builder and Tour Creator. One of them is VR and the other one is just a basic slideshow type of map. Yeah, I have. I um, I haven't uh, used it. I've just been making one of my local town. I, what I want to do is we did some traveling by train, and I want to do a trip from our town to Dallas, but through the pictures I took from the train. Oh. So um, I'm hoping that 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 will be able to go into the presentation. I think that'd be kind of fun. There's also um, Polly. I think that's where they create your own, um, right? Is it called Polly? Polly, how, how do you spell it? P-O-L-Y, and that's where you kind of do your own virtual 360 of like, say if I wanted to do one of my library, um, I think that's where I would create it. Polly.google.com? I'm not sure. And. Going back to the mind maps, I know that the, I heard, I, I was listening to one of my podcasts and I heard them talking about how they um, used several points in the map to kind of do kind of like a treasure map and each each uh, point of reference, like they had to figure out something out. Like it was kind of like a, like a breakout, but it was like a mystery tour scavenger hunt type. 
I, I, I walked in late on the, my maps. Yeah, with my maps, it's pretty cool. I've used that as an activity for uh, social studies on my kids when I was in the classroom. And you would just set up the maps and the, each student, I would assign them a country that they would go to. And then they would have to go in and type in a certain piece of information that I required from them to do before they moved on to the rest. So it was a great little collaborative activity. Uh, and I can definitely see the way it would work out great, like in the, the treasure hunt or treasure map, kind of like mini breakout session where you would go to, because that just a great idea for that. So thank you for sharing that. Because that's what I love, that the students were able to put in links and certain artifacts within the My Maps to continue growing and uh, give students even more information about those certain countries and topics and things of, uh, of that nature. So thanks for yeah, the, that. Yeah, that, that uh, out there. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. All right. Sounds like this meeting was going to be very earth heavy. <laughs> all right and uh oh look at that i didn't notice that uh, on the bottom left of my hangouts if i click on hangouts at the top right it'll appear attachments and the meeting agenda is there is that do you all see that too oh nice i hadn't noticed that that's awesome so it did it automatically i was trying to figure out how to send it i was going to do it over the chat but where is it bottom left left yeah it's oh i it. see It'll open it up on the Yeah, even on my That's phone, it's got the little information or the little eye, and I can see the attachment there. I'm not going to open it, though. I'm at a stoplight, so don't worry. I'm okay. <laughs> Let's do it. Be careful. <laughs> awesome. Hey, I'm not, I'm not missing out on any of this awesome sauce you guys are bringing. So, like I said, right now, with, just the, with that map conversation, I already have, like, some great ideas turning up in, in the old noggin, so I'm excited about those. <laughs> Once you have them, I'm actually using I'm actually using uh, one of your shares that I'm like dying to to show everybody how to use it. The one that you on the talk on the Google Forms. Oh, the talking comment. Oh yes, yes. I yes. love that. Talking comment is awesome. <laughs> so just just make sure that the students also have the extension because. If they don't have the extension as a teacher or an administrator facilitator, you may be able to put the audio into the form. But what will happen is if the, you share it with the student, when you, they click on that, it's going to look like a link and it's going to open up on a separate window. So if the students have access and they have the ability to get the, the extension, it would wor it'll, it'll work out great because uh, one of our – we kind of found that out through trial and error because uh, um, I, I thought I have a student account, but my student account within the district, I didn't know that it was put in a separate bucket. So it gave me all these extra, uh, you know, abilities to be able to download. But in a real student setting, they're not able to download that extension. But we rolled it out and uh, we, we made it available to all students. And now I have teachers that are like, oh, this makes my spelling practices so much easier because I can just record the words and then they just put it in a Google form and the students are practicing their typing and uh, it just facilitates everything for them. So yeah, it's, it's been really good. Um, and the way I kind of was trying to, before I saw yours, because we were trying to get it to, hold on a second. We were trying to get it to, um, like, how could we get, like, a voice um, for it to give them the the read aloud of the of the question? Um, so I did like a QR code on the um, on the Google form where they'd have to have two separate devices, like, you know, to hear the the they'd have to have a phone or an iPad to scan the the QR code to have the question read to them. Hmm. Yeah, and, and now I'm hoping, uh, I don't know if you guys have already seen it, at least on your EDU end, but we haven't on ours yet. I know it's supposed to be rolling out by the end of November, but the audio in Google Slides okay. uh, is amazing. And so I can already see that where teachers are going to be able to, you know, do the audio, do longer audio for stories um, right. and read up loud and things of that sort through a Google form. Uh, I'm sorry, through a Google slide and then maybe embedded into the form as well. So 
I don't know. It's just a lot of app smashing and workarounds, but it really is exciting. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a good share. I like I like that extension. And I, and all of this, if you have a chance to share it with the group, that would be awesome. On the group forum. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll definitely share it on the group forum. I'll just get the those Twitter message. Well, actually, I have the videos, so I can share it there. And then usually I'll post a lot of that stuff on Twitter. But yeah, that way we can have maybe a nice little repository in the group that for resources that can be shared and reused and just build a little library. I think that would be pretty great for us to have and just be able to share and with one another. Yeah. Awesome. I'll, I'll upload that, that sample form that I have that QR code um, with a different, um, with the voice um, read aloud so that you can see that, what I did for, with that Google form. Sweet. Okay, and um, awesome. for some of you that <clears throat> have not uh, signed in, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, you don't have to, but it would help. Uh, the, Where? The Google form? In the chat. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure if you have access to the chat. Should be at the top right, maybe. So if I send a message, just to send a message. Oh, sorry. Gotcha. Okay. I know you said it. So maybe I need to send it again. Maybe if you get here late. Yeah, I, I just have, I don't have a message. Okay. Let me see. There we go. So hopefully it shows now. Okay. Okay. All right. So I think we pretty much covered what we needed to for now. Um, the idea is for this to last one hour. I don't want to take too much time out of anybody's day. And uh, so is there some other topic anybody would like to bring up or questions, comments? I, I'm interested in um, how are you using Google uh, to increase student um, collaborations? Just different ways of getting students to collaborate with the Google tools. Um, and because I represent, I think a lot of us do. I, well, I represent the whole district. Sometimes I get stuck on the K2 kids. Uh, they're just a different beast from the high school kids. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm just interested in hearing how how you're having the kids collaborate synchronously and asynchronously across the grade levels. Ne maybe for I, next time. Okay. That's something I've, that I've we seen, can. Uh, first graders use, um, of course, we had for pre K through one, we had mini iPads. Um, and then second through 12, we used Chromebooks. But um, I showed the, we borrowed the Chromebooks, they're, they're attached Chromebooks. We borrowed them from the second grade for a uh, first grade and they were drawing magnets. So the, the, the kids were paired up and it was a touch screen. So they, the teacher had just read them a book about magnets and the positive and negative pole and everything and all the, the vocabulary that she needed. Then the kids were to draw with their finger on the Chromebook, so they drew them yeah. out, and there were two of them. So I mean, for both of them, they were talking and using the. As a matter of fact, it was a bilingual class. It was cool because they were using Spanish vocabulary and English vocabulary together, talking about um, how the magnet worked. Mm -hmm. And they drew a diagram, and then they told each other and told the class on the carpet after after the lesson. So. That was a collaboration. It was it's kind of teaching them how to collaborate with in the face-to-face right. -face space before you get to, you know, the digital space. Yeah. But drawing anything you can do with drawing uh, between the, the two groups, the two kids, or or that's a great idea. Group. Yeah. Right now, for our devices. Um, 
we're a Chromebook district. We're almost one to one. Not that that's anything to. I mean, so we have plenty of devices. Mm -hmm. It's just they weren't purposely purchased for the littles. Right. Right. And so I think that's where, and in West Laco, the campuses make the decision on what we buy, not not the central office level. And so I think we need to have some conversations to remember when you purchase, mm -hmm. yeah. remember your users. The right tool for the right job. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, what's, what's going to be the learning outcome and that not so much the devices, what do you expect the kids to, to get out and then start applying whatever tool you're going to want um, for the output? Um, what The way I've seen a lot of the Google being used is, of course, collaboratively through the slides, right. um, the sharing of documents. Um, we're seeing a, a heavy usage of Google Classroom. Um, it, other than that, I really haven't seen too much on that, but I know that they use or heavily use their Google login for all the other great apps like Seesaw and Flipgrid and right. Let's Screen Justify um, and then put that into our slides and let's do YouTube channels and, and so on. Okay. Um, so it's comparable because I guess I'm not seeing the kids using Google slides and you know docs to create and write at that level okay and that's that's the experience it sounds like you're having as well they're using more of the other tools at the little with the littles yeah the the microphone in google docs is pretty good okay. i've seen um students use it into the document and the words come up like yeah, the, um, of course, it's one long run on sentence, but at least they're getting their <laughs> thoughts down on the paper. Okay. And they can always go yeah, back and edit. Whole, yeah. What I like about that, too, Not though, the, the voice. <laughs> sorry. I'm done. Oh, okay. I'm so, so sorry. I didn't mean that. I thought you had uh, finished. But going back to the, the Google Docs with the text to speech or the voice is that now with the word count, it's great for exercising to check for fluency and just read out loud or anything of that sort. So that's one of the ways that I've been sharing with the teachers to be able to just use that as a tool. Like, don't worry so much. I mean, it's going to type up and they may not be pronouncing it right. The microphone may not be as accurate, but at least it gives them an exercise. And uh, just that with the word count there as well, it'll say, hey, you know what? So. For one minute, let's practice the, the reading, the fluency. Yeah. And then, of course, he was using to paint pacify as well, um, doing those things. And, of course, there's Flipgrid and other, you know, yeah. things that they can use for timing. But, um, you know, some just really great tools with that. Sounds great. Thanks. Okay. And um, one of the things that I'm going to be presenting at TCEA next uh what is it? February? Yeah. February. Yeah. It's uh, going to be one of the Google Googlers, official Googlers. Uh, they reached, uh, uh, she reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to present on Jamboards. Uh, that's the link that you have there on the chat. Cool. And one of the things that you can do on Jamboards is collaborate. So I can actually draw something. Yep. And somebody else can join in. I see Miss Perez joining in, and she can also draw with on the Jamboard or add pictures or add uh, notes, sticky notes, for example. And I see there Julie Kelly joining in, oh, cool. Doctor Jackson joining in, and each of us can actually create. And at the top, 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 you're gonna see something that says expand frame bar. And I can add more, I would say, whiteboards, if you will. And we're not just limited to one whiteboard, but multiple Got whiteboards. Mm. That's great. What I, what I like about the tool is just uh, the ability for a teacher to use this on a device, uh, maybe even an iPad or, you know, something touch, because uh, it kind of reminds me of Explain Everything. So you can essentially do your notes there and then just share them with your students and collaborate and get answers and say, okay, now you answer. And now you're involving everybody 
in the classroom. And uh, so I think that's really cool. It's a really neat tool. Yeah. Or if you can explain something to the class, uh, you can pre-record it, explain it to the class, share it with the class, along with the video, and they can go from mm -hmm. there. Flip classroom approach type. Yeah, and yes, I know sir. this Jamboard, like the, I'm using it off of my, my desktop, um, but you have more tools if you use it off of your app. Correct. Um, if you're on a Chromebook or your phone or an iPad, um, you're going to get uh, the auto draw a lot more tools um, to work with and if you have the actual jam board which is extremely expensive yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you'll have even more features yeah going back to the recording on a Google Doc um, something I saw that was pretty cool today one of my students was trying to type something on a Google Doc, but was unable to. So what he did is this. He has his Google Doc on a computer, and he has the same Google Doc on his phone. He uses the phone's microphone to type and the computer to edit. That was awesome. How is that again? Yeah, he used his phone to... He was using his phone to use the microphone to voice to speech, I mean, voice to text. Okay. And then he uses the computer to edit. So as he's yeah. typing with his voice, he edits with the computer. And that was this morning. That was pretty awesome. That kid knows the power that he has, that yeah. Google has. I haven't seen it done like that before, but that was amazing. No. We have um, our the district provides a phone for their administrator, right? But when the phones are updated, they just kind of sit in a pile on the, in the text office. We don't really know what to do with them. But uh, sometimes for webmasters, we'll allow them because we don't allow teachers to be on the network. They're with their personal phone. So we have these, devi these devices. They're not uh, under a phone plan anymore. But this might be a good idea for the students to use that, to use it as a speaker, you know, to put that on your, your network and they can record with <laughs> the older phones. Like, I, I don't know what y'all do with your old phones, but um, those are some devices that we could put to use. Wow, your administrators get their own phones? That's awesome. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty cool deal. You lost us after you said wow. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish I was an administrator, but no. <laughs> However, the limitation of BYOD. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. That's the, otherwise they'd be they'd be using their own, but then they got other uh, streaming issues too. So, um, and that way, if there's something legal that happens, and uh, you have to surrender the device, they're not losing their family phone. Yeah, true. Sometimes that happens, unfortunately. Yeah. All right, so we're almost coming to an end. Um, any other topics that you want to share or revisit? We've got some good ideas to work on this next week. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, thank you for making this group grow. We're starting small, but we're getting there. Yes. Thank you for your time, Carlos. Thank you for yes, joining thank us. You. Thank you, thank you. Well, nice to meet you all. Yes, good to meet you all too. Have a great week. Thanksgiving, etc. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Gobble gobble. Bye. Awesome guys. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you for everything. Appreciate it. Okay. Bye bye. Bye guys. Thank you. Goodbye. Have a good one. And goodbye.